<laughs> uh, I thought you turned that paper in. I did. Now fucking Murray turned me in, and so Sweeney's making me write another one. Hmm. Good old Sweeney. He never stops trying, now does he? Uh, he's one of those proud to be nigger people. I hate those guys. I already met Danny. He's not proud. He's a manipulative, self-righteous Uncle Tom. He's trying to make you feel guilty about writing about Adolf Hitler. Yeah, some nigger, some spick writes about Martin Luther King or fucking Caesar Kami Chavez. <laughs> it's a pat on the head. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you can see the hypocrisy in that, can't you? Edward Furlong plays a high school student yeah. and junior skinhead who gets in trouble for praising Adolf Hitler in that early scene from American History X, which tells the story of how that kid follows his older brother, played by Edward Norton, into a skinhead gang in the Venice Beach area of Los Angeles. see that in this scene where a playground war leads to some black kids trying to steal Norton's car. He kills two of them and is arrested. Put your hands behind your head! The older brother goes to prison where at first he links up with the white power faction, but his views begin to change after they punish him with a brutal rape. He gets a visit from his former high school teacher, played by Avery Brooks. You have to ask the right question. Has anything you've done made your life better? Out of prison, the older brother wants to close the book on the skinhead chapter of his life, but his kid brother is still very much a gang member, and the local cops and high school authorities still see him as influential in the skinhead scene. Do you know what you're asking me to do? Do you really know? Yes, I'm asking you to do whatever's in your power to do. American History X is a powerful and ambitious movie that contains strong performances and compelling individual scenes but it somehow never achieves takeoff speed. Too many scenes have to function as band-aids for the plot. It's a good movie, always interesting, often provocative, and I give it credit for an intelligent and uncompromising approach to the problem of race hate in America. I'm recommending it, but it has the potential to be great, and I don't think it quite achieves it. Well, I think it does, and I think the key scene in you know, how he became a skinhead is that dinner table scene where the father rails against uh, affirmative action. So we see it, that Kate, uh, hate, as the phrase goes, you have to be carefully taught. Yeah, but you know, that's the very scene that I'm objecting to because that appears to be the first time the father has ever mentioned that to the son. The son doesn't know his father thinks like that until the father brings it up. And this comes apparently only days or weeks before the father's death. It's not as if he has been raised for 17 years like that. So the scene reads like it was written because they felt they needed some quick explanation. Well, I think we also can see the, uh, just the uh, camaraderie of, you know, the beach scene and belonging, and this is a kid who's uh, lost. He doesn't have two parents in his house, you know, wearing a badge, uh, even if it is a swastika, whatever. Uh, another terrific performance, of course, by Edward Norton in the film. I mean, He's very good. If oh. there's one imbalance in the film is that Edward Norton is so effective and the rhetoric that he uses to support mm -hmm. the white supremacist point of view right. and the other points of view in the movie are all kind of ineffectual or soft or nerdy or never really made very well i mean actually when you look at this movie it's the racist stuff that comes across most strongly except by the end of the film i think it is very very oh, yeah. i mean it's been building to a very logical conclusion so that I think the film is actually a very powerful document, oh. and uh, there's real tension in this picture. Oh, there I are individual scenes that are first-rate. I just don't think it was all quite pulled together. <laughs>